AI just murdered open source software and maintainers are totally quitting. What if the very code you wrote to free the world is being used to destroy it? We're watching the biggest heist in human history play out in real time. And most developers are too, too busy celebrating their productivity gains using AI to notice the gun to their head. So Nolan Lawson just dropped a real reality check that proves the era of small library is over, killed by AI that can generate it in seconds. But it's worse than that. Maintainers are being flooded with so much AI generated slime, locking their repos and quitting forever. So is this the end of the open web? Let's dive into this topic today. All right, so guys, I'm a huge fan of open source. I've used a ton of open source projects. I've contributed to a lot of open source. I, I haven't actually gone as far as doing my own open source because I'm not quite that brave. But um, I have to tell you that reading the comments on the last video was really one of the highlights of my week. So seriously, go leave a comment and let me know what you think. I love hearing your guys' take on this. Now, there's a lot of recent articles coming out because there's a canary in the coal mine for every developer who's watching this. So a lot of these argues, uh, uh, articles argue that there's an er it's that the era of small utility libraries, um, which will have millions of downloads every single day, is officially over. So why would you install a dependency, risk a supply chain attack, manage updates when an LM can just spit out 20 lines of code that you need? Now, 80% of developers now use AI tools, and the friction of finding a library is higher than the friction of generating one. This sounds convenient, but it means the on-ramp for new open source contributors is vanishing before our eyes. What this will do is actually hurt AI in the long run. If nobody writes small libraries anymore, where do the junior developers cut their teeth, and where does AI go to steal the code to be able to learn from, right? So if you run an open source project right now, your life is living hell of AI generated noise. Maintainers are reporting a massive uptick in low quality, spammy and LLM hallucinated bug reports that waste hours of their time. So I'm people, seeing people use bots to spam thousands of repos with useless changes just to pad their resumes or score uh, Hacktoberfest points. So it's gotten so bad that projects like Express.js have had to deal with reaction videos mocking the sheer volume of garbage being thrown at them. So this isn't contribution. It's a denial of service attack on the human attention span of the volunteers who keep the internet running. So when you treat open source like a video game and grind for XP, you destroy the community's trust that makes it work. Now, there's a massive difference between using AI as a rubber duck to, dock, to debug your logic and using it to write your code for you. Smart developers use AI to guide them to solutions engaging with problems deeply to understand the why behind the code. But the data shows a terrifying trend of vibe coding where people blindly copy and paste whatever the chatbot spits out. Now, this leads to a hollow code base where nobody actually understand how the systems works. They just know that AI said it should work. Now, in my uh, almost a quarter century of, um, uh, of uh, software development, I've learned that if you can't explain why your code works, you haven't actually written it and there's something wrong. So we're trading deep expertise for shallow velocity and the technical debt bill is going to be huge. So let's be real here. These AI models were trained on your code, this open source libraries, and they often ignoring the license that you explicitly attach to it. Microsoft and OpenAI are currently fighting lawsuits claiming that tools like Copilot are, quote, software piracy on unprecedented scale, unquote. That's from the lawsuit. Now, they took GPL code, which requires you to share your improvements, strip the license, and sold it back to you as a monthly subscription called AI. It's the ultimate privatization of the com of the commons, taking what we built together and locking it behind corporate APIs. Now, there have been instances where Copy regurgitate huge chunks of license code verbatim without giving any credit at all. If open source licenses don't matter anymore, why would anyone bother releasing their code for free in the future? Now, you might think that AI writes clean code, but under the hood, it often ha is a security nightmare waiting to happen. I've seen AI suggest code with hard-coded passwords like root123 or vulnerable security SQL injection patterns because it saw them in a bad tutorial somewhere. Now, because AI doesn't understand context or security policies, it just statistically guesses what comes next, often choosing the most common and insecure path. Maintainers are terrified that attackers will start poisoning the training data to deliberately inject backdoors into AI-generated code. One of the things I can't stand the most is when AI gets to a certain point in the code and it doesn't know what to do, so it just generates a fake library. So we're building our critical infrastructures on foundation of code that looks right but might have fatal flaws in them but we won't find out until it's too late we try to ship it to prod now trust me debugging your own code is hard enough debugging a robot's hallucination is a special kind of torture now 
if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Hack, our specialty is connecting those systems to help your company work to maximum efficiency. Check out startuphack.com and we can help you out. Now, I'm genuinely worried about the next generation of developers who are entering the field right now because open source used to be the playground where you learned by reading other people's code and fixing small bugs. But if AI doesn't does all the easy work now, juniors are robbed of the struggle that actually builds their engineering muscles. So a lot of our authors point out that asking a candidate to reverse a binary tree might be pointless now, but so is writing a utility library. So we're potentially creating a generation of architects who've never laid a brick and don't know how the cement works. Without the foundational knowledge, who's going to fix AI when it inevitably breaks or when it builds your code for you and something breaks and AI can't fix it? Now, Open source burnout was already a crisis, but AI has poured gasoline onto the fire. 73% of developers report burnout and 60% of maintainers have considered walking away entirely because of the stress. So when you combine entitled users demanding free fixes with a flood of AI generated spam PRs, it becomes unbearable. So I've seen maintainers describe the work of reviewing these low quality contributions as mind numbing and soul crushing. If the humans who maintain the Linux kernel or open SSL decide to quit, the entire internet stops working. So it's that simple. We're pushing these volunteers to the brink and AI tools are final are the final straw that might break the camel's back. Now people argue that generating code with AI is safer than trusting random NPM packages from strangers. Now I don't know that I agree with that. The logic is that if you reduce your supply chain from 20 vendors to just one, the AI provider, but that's just as dangerous illusion because you're trading a distributed risk for a centralized black box that you can't audit and that doesn't give you the same output every single time. See, at least those distributors from the NT, NP, the random NPM pack gave you the exact same thing every single time. So instead of trusting a community of eyes on an open source library, you're trusting statistic models that hallucinates and know that they hallucinate one out of five times. So if that model has a subtle flaw or bias, it propagates instantly into millions of applications without a patch note. So in 25 years of building software development, I've never seen a single vendor solution that was safer than a well-maintained open source project. Now there's a new term floating around called vibe coding, and it basically means it runs so it must be right. Developers are accepting AI output because it passes the unit test, but they don't understand the edge cases that it'll miss. AI often generates code that is logic looking, uh, logical looking, but contains weird, subtle bugs that aren't immediately, immediately obvious to the human eye. So that's why you always have to make sure you run and test your own code, test the code, and make sure you understand every single line of what it's doing. This creates a massive amount of tech debt that it is, that is invisible until the system is under heavy load of attack. So we're filling our code bases with human sludge disguised as clean code, and the cleanup cost is going to be massive. You can't vibe code your way through a production outage at 3 a.m. in the morning. You need to know what the code actually does. So one of the core tenets of open source is that code should be readable and educational for the community, but AI-generated code is often verbose, repetitive, and lacks the elegance of the elegant abstraction a human would create. See, because it's not afraid of generating a thousand lines of code. It doesn't necessarily, it, can, it knows it can read it but it's not gonna worry that its next neighbor might not be able to read it. See, when I write code, I try to pretend the person who has to maintain it is a deranged psychopath and knows where I live. So AI is not as much worried about this, right? So it might solve the problem, but it doesn't teach anything about it, nor does it do it in the right way. It doesn't care about doing it the right way. So we're losing the educational value of libraries that served as examples. If code becomes something only machines write and read, we lose the human culture of programming entirely. Code is communication between humans, not just instructions for computers. And AI is totally making that uh, like different. So the sad truth is that big tech companies love this shift because it centralizes power back to the big companies. They have data centers, the training data, and capital run these massive models that you can't run at home or if you're a small business. Open source was the great equalizer that allowed a kid in a garage to compete with Google, but that gap is widening again. If the best AI models are closed source and proprietary, we're moving back to the world of technological astrocod as I can't say that word, but they are there selling their own data back to us and we are thanking them for it and paying them for it. We need to keep fighting the base of AI uh, to make sure that it's training against good things and we need to use it 
carefully because it's a very powerful tool, but it also can wield a lot of problems and destruction if we don't use it right. So is open source dead? Well, not yet, but it's certainly under a dramatic load that doesn't look great in the future. I don't exactly know what open source will look like in 10 years from now. We need to stop accepting low effort contributions and start valuing deep, complex problem solving that AI can't do. The future of open source isn't small utility libraries. It's big inventive projects that require human architectural thinking. We need to support maintainers financially so they don't burn out from the spam and the thankless work. Tools are emerging to detect and block AI spam, but it's gonna be an arms race between the bots and the maintainers. Ultimately, the developers who survive will be the ones who use AI as a tool, not a crutch, and who still respect the code. Now, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think I'm way off? Do you think AI is going to be the next best thing? Like, what are you guys thinking? Uh, I love to hear you guys' thoughts, so make sure you leave a comment down below, and make sure you like and subscribe. Here at Startup Hack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies, so if we can help your company get your systems uh, ironed out and connected together, reach out at startuphack.com, and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As your fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We we don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com Spencer.